Uh, Mike Renner, Pro Football Focus lead draft analyst, co-host of the Tailgate podcast. Head over to profootballpff.com. Use the promo code PFF30 for 30% off any PFF subscriptions. I want to talk about quarterbacks, but I want you to go back to last year, though, Mike. And where was Zach Wilson on your radar? Where was Mac Jones on your radar? These are guys who are starting week one in the NFL because it feels like every year we happen upon somebody and we go, where did they come from? So let's go back to where you had Zach Wilson and Mac Jones a year ago. They're on the radar for sure. They were not super high on that radar though. Uh, Mac Jones, uh, obviously we saw him towards the end after Tua went down. Uh, there was a guy on, and our staff, our college guy, Seth Galena, who said, you know, he could end up as, as an actual quarterback prospect. I didn't think he had the tools. Zach Wilson obviously had that shoulder injury, did not have a good sophomore year. He was actually more thought of highly as a prospect by us back after his freshman year. So I think he kind of hit the nail on the head here. There's like a, this trend of guys coming out of nowhere. Um, and, and I think it's just kind of how quarterback development has been uh, at the younger ages uh, nowadays. It doesn't kind of take that long four-year starter to actually make, establish yourself as this real deal quarterback prospect. I said this numerous times last season that Mac Jones was making it look too easy. The regular season he was just making it look too easy. And then I, I thought, well, okay, you got a, you got a running back first rounder. You got offensive line, first rounders, wide receivers, first rounders. Is he any good? I, I, I wasn't, I, I don't know if I'm still sure how good he is, but he, there's something to be said about how easy he made it look last year. That is the sort of million dollar question that everyone's trying to figure out in quarterback evaluations. How do you separate what the quarterback's doing from what the offense and the talent around him is doing? And it's very easy to hit guys who are wide open. A lot of quarterbacks can do that with wide open pockets, with three feet in every direction to work with. But it's what can you do? to go above and beyond that. And I think we almost underrated, or a lot of people underrated the fact that Mac Jones was kind of, he was creating some of that space in his own. He would look off linebackers. He would hold safeties. He would do the things that it's difficult to sort of quantify. And you see a guy running wide open. Sometimes that's on the quarterback for, like I said, holding a safety or getting this, creating the space himself. And Mac Jones did that better than any other quarterback in class last year, maybe even if not Trevor Lawrence right up there with him. So I think that did get underrated, and you're seeing that in the preseason now. All right. If the draft were held today, the first quarterback taken, absolutely positively, no doubt, is? <sighs> there's there's no Trevor Lawrence in this year's class. But to me, it's Spencer Rattler, the Oklahoma quarterback. Obviously, Lincoln Riley develops quarterbacks there as good as anyone else in the country, and his talent is just off the charts. And just what he can do, not only physically with his legs as a runner, but just outside the pocket, arm talent, he kind of takes that sort of playmaking ability that everyone's looking for, that out-of-structure stuff that Mahomes is known for, that Aaron Rodgers is known for. He takes that to the extreme. He was the highest-grade quarterback by us here at PFF outside the pocket last year. He is looking to do that almost first. He's kind of the definition of a Gen Z quarterback where the, the attention span's not there. He wants to break the pocket. He wants to just start making plays, uh, and he consistently does it in that Oklahoma offense. Yeah, but he got benched last year. I, I know. I watched yeah. him when he started, and I was like, as, I remember watching him in high school because he had Nico Mannion, the basketball player, I think, was on his uh, high school football team. Like they, th He was like, wow, this guy is awesome. And then he goes to Oklahoma, and I'm thinking, he ain't awesome. He became better, a lot better last year. But see, that's just it. Like it's, it's rolling the dice. If, I, if you would have said at the beginning of last year, that guy is going to be the first quarterback taken, I would have went, he got talent. I don't know if he's going to be consistent enough. That's the thing. It's at this point, these guys aren't to the level of Trevor Lawrence. They're not to the level of even Justin Fields was coming into his last year of college. Um, but the talent is there. And, and that's kind of what you're basing off of. It's the things that he's kind of doing and excelling at, you can't really teach. And the sort of inside the pocket, it's staying within structure. You can develop that more. You can't develop a guy to throw it 50 yards on a dime running to his right, which we've seen Rattler do multiple times. Okay, so Spencer Rattler out of Oklahoma. The second quarterback off the board, if the draft were today, would be? Sam Howell, North Carolina, another guy who's very talented. I mean, he might have the strongest arm in the country. 
uh, him or Malik Willis from Liberty right up there. They both have throws in their tape that are, you know, 60 plus yards and not, not super sky balls. Uh, he's throwing it on the line. Uh, almost physically looks like Baker Mayfield's just a shade over six foot, about two fifteen. Uh, can make some plays as a runner, but that North Carolina offense, why we're not kind of putting them in that, you know, that conversation of Trevor Lawrence, like a surefire lock. Number one is that threw more RPOs than anyone else in the country last year. He threw more go balls than anyone else in the country. And not that, not saying that he won't have to do those at the NFL level, but those are one read, basically not having to do quarterbacky things. It's just arm talent at that point. So the arm talent's there. Physical tools are there to, to end up as an number one overall pick. It's just, we need to see him actually operate an offense there at North Carolina more. All right. The third quarterback off the board is. Here's where it gets a little hairy. I think those two are the top two. Clearly the guy I like as the third quarterback off the board is the Kai guy I touched on just there. Malik Willis from Liberty. Uh, uh, Trey Lance goes number three overall this past year, basically based off of what he can do physically. Uh, not much sort of polish as a quarterback, not much sort of even experience as a quarterback, Trey Lance. That's kind of Malik Willis at Liberty. He was a former Auburn guy, lost out to Bo Nix, but he, he said, might have the strongest arm in the country and is the best runner in the country. He had over a thousand yards rushing last year, is six foot, 225, and runs a four five. Like he had more broken tackles than a lot of the running backs drafted last year. This guy could be a running back in the NFL if he wanted to, would be a probably third, fourth rounder if he just wanted to play that. And that's going to play so much and has been playing so much with guys like Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, how it you know, impacts defenses. So I do think that even if Malik Willis doesn't necessarily develop too much as a passer, just what he can do from a rushing perspective is going to show him, uh, get him drafted highly. He's Mike Renner, the Pro Football Focus lead draft analyst. Uh, let me throw out a couple other names. JT Daniels at Georgia. High on him? He, not yet. You'll go back and watch the Cincinnati game. So he comes in end of last year. I think he played five games, I want to say. The first few, electric. I mean, he's bombing it down the football field. But then you watch him go up against a good defense. So he didn't actually face any of the top sort of competition in the SEC when he does come in. He plays a good defense in Cincinnati. And basically, he doesn't know when to stop taking chances with the football. Had one of the highest average depths of target of any quarterback in college football last year, over 12 yards down the football field. He's just throwing almost willy-nilly. And you see that in the bowl game where he's just taking all these bad chances and necessarily hmm. uh, not really reading the defenses first. So still too early, I'd say, for him. But he was the he was QB3 in that class behind Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields coming out of high school. Obviously, a massively talented dude but we just need to see a more consistent quarterback this year. Keaton Slovis at USC. I don't think he has a great arm, but I think he's really accurate. I don't know. And he's got good size. So I think six two six three. What do you think of Slovis? Yeah, he, he's the guy that needs that Mac Jones sort of leap to basically playing perfect football because no one's going to draft him first overall based off of what he brings to the table physically. And he's that the arm is not great, but you know, Joe Burrow's arm wasn't great. You went number one overall. But when it is not great, you have to play flawless. You have to not make mistakes with the football. And I think that's what Slovis has just done too much of at this point. Throw the ball to the other team. He's basically missing linebackers, missing reads, and that sort of thing that you can't do. But he he does have the sort of the processing ability. You see him get to his check downs quickly. You see him get to second reads very quickly. He has that ability, but just too many sort of boneheaded play so far i know uh carson strong at nevada that he lives up to his name you know he's a big kid but he's at nevada yeah. how did somebody who's maybe a first round draft pick end up at nevada i actually haven't looked too much into his recruiter background why he ended up there but it is surprising because not only is he you know playing good football at the quarterback position he's, he's got a cannon and he's got a very aesthetically pleasing release, like kind of like Aaron Rodgers release where it's just like, it's quick. It looks like the way a football should be thrown. That's Carson strong. Um, and so I think he could end up in that first round conversation, obviously played exceptionally well last year has a pretty good wide receiver out there in Romeo dubs who could be in the first strong conversation as well, that he's going to play some real dope competition this year. I believe he plays Boise state early on plays, plays Cal. Cal early on. Plays yeah. Some, yeah. Plays some, plays some actual, you know, D one competition after not playing any, or excuse me, power five competition after not playing any last year, but Carson strong, I think he had the most completions of anyone. And by far that came 50 plus yards downfield last year and had the farthest throw in the country from start to finish 70 yards from his hand to where the ball ended up of any quarterback in the country last year. I'll throw out another one. It's only because a scout told me about him. 
Kenny Pickett at Pittsburgh? Kenny Pickett. He's got so there's a lot of guys with cannons in this draft class. Not a guy, not a lot of guys who are polished though. He is all over the place with his accuracy so far. Like he'll he'll have throws that are just, I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous throws. He reminds me a lot of the guy who might be starting for the Colts or Jacob Easton uh, back at Washington, where it's just like, man, that is 40 yard laser post. And then the next one is a bubble screen that's sailed over a guy's head. So Pickett has the physical ability, but man, he has accuracy issues for days. You got some good games coming up this weekend. Will we see a surprise in college football? I mean, you would definitely see a surprise. If you're asking me to predict a surprise, that is not my forte. I am not, I am not the best prognosticator. But uh, my, my, my upset pick, if there is any upset pick, I think Georgia comes out. Georgia is one of my national championship picks. I think they come out and put it to Clemson because this is the most talented defense in the country right now. And yeah, Clemson's ranked three, Georgia's ranked five, but I think on a neutral field, give me Georgia in that one. Mike, good to talk to you. We'll be talking to you during the season. Thank you very much. For sure. Thanks for having me on, Dan. Have a good one. That's Mike Renner, Pro Football Focus Lead Draft Analyst. I will say that Mike does make me feel better about, about my questions when I go, uh, who's your upset special this weekend? Whew. Like he gives it great thought. And I appreciate that. 